Hello, welcome to Electrorad, specialist in electric heating solutions. In this video, we will be explaining how to set up your new Aeroflow radiator. This is your Aeroflow radiator keypad. It is located on the side of the radiator and will be used to change the radiator modes, turn the radiator on and off, and set up the automatic heating. To make the keypad a little easier to understand, we will be using numbers to refer to each button. Button 1 to 4 on the top row and button 5 and 6 on the bottom. Buttons 1 to 4 will relate to icons and images on the screen. Button 5 is indicated by the on off label and button 6 is indicated by the mode label. Now we can plug in the radiator. Yours may already be connected to a fused spur. The first screen we will see is the day and time setting which is indicated by an icon showing a small clock at the top of the screen. We will start by setting the current day of the week. This is indicated by the flashing numbers on the right hand side of the screen. The numbers 1 to 7 represent the days of the week, Monday to Sunday. 1 being Monday, 2 Tuesday, 3 Wednesday, 4 Thursday, 5 Friday, 6 Saturday and 7 Sunday. To change the day, we need to use the buttons 2 and 3. These have a plus and minus above them. Using button 3, we can go up through the days and button 2 will take us down through the days. Now select the current day of the week. On my screen, I've selected Wednesday. Once you are happy that you're on the correct number for your current day, press button 4, which has the OK symbol above it. After you have pressed OK, the hours on the digital clock in the middle of the screen should be flashing again. This is a 24 hour clock. First of all, we will be selecting the hours and then the minutes. Using the plus and minus buttons from earlier, buttons 2 and 3, go up and down through the hours until you reach your current hour. When you're done, press OK, button 4, to move on to the minutes. Now the minutes will be flashing. Again, using the plus and minus buttons, select your current minute. So as you can see on our screen, it's 9.23 in the morning on Wednesday. When you're happy and you have the right time, press OK, button 4. Now the 1 to 7 on the right hand side will be flashing again. If for some reason you've got one of the sections wrong, don't worry. Press OK button 4 until the field you need to correct is flashing. Make the change that you need and keep pressing OK until the numbers on the right hand side are flashing again. We can only move on to the next stage when these numbers are flashing. When you're ready and the 1 to 7 are highlighted, press the on off button button 5 and now the screen should change. Now we should be on the standby screen. To identify that this is the standby screen, there is a symbol of a small circle with a line through the top of it in the top left corner. Standby mode is indicating that your radiator is off and will not produce any heat. We can turn the radiator on and off by pressing the on off button, button 5. It is recommended that you use the on off button as while the radiator is in standby mode, it will keep all of your settings saved and has very little energy consumption roughly 20p a year, whereas turning your radiator off at the wall will cause you to lose any settings, meaning that you have to repeat all the programming. While we are in standby mode, the radiator screen will display the current temperature of the room. So in the room I'm in, the temperature is a mild 20.9 degrees. From the standby mode, we need to make sure the background settings of the radiator are correct. To do this, we need to access the settings menu. Make sure the radiator is in standby mode do this by pressing the on off button, button 5, until you see the standby symbol at the top again. When you're ready, hold down the on off button, button 5, for 5 seconds or until the display changes. You should now be able to see 4 dashes in the middle of the display and the numbers 1 to 7 on the right hand side again. We are now in the settings mode. Here we have the option to change the setback temperature, the offset temperature, the backlight duration, the default display and we can view the product number. First of all, let's look at the numbers on the right. These are now representing which setting we are on. As we go through the settings, the arrow will go down through the numbers. The first setting that we are on is a setback temperature. This will set an amount to reduce the temperature of the radiator by when you are out or go to bed, preventing the radiator from having to work harder to reach the desired temperature, as well as taking less time to reheat the room. However, we highly recommend leaving this on the four dashes as this provides us with much more flexibility when we are using the radiator later on. 
If you have accidentally changed the setting, use the plus button, button 3, to return the value to the four dashes. Now press OK, button 4. The four dashes should now have changed to 0.0, .0 degrees, flashing in the middle of the screen, and the arrow on the right hand side will be pointing at 2 on the numbers 1 to 7. This is the offset temperature setting. Sometimes, due to your radiator being low down and often to one side of the room, the radiator will display a slightly different room temperature to any other thermometer you might have. We can use this offset temperature setting to calibrate and match it with your external thermometer. As you can see here, we have a thermometer in the room reading 21.5 degrees, but our radiator is reading 20.9 degrees. This difference is 0.6 degrees. To match these up, we can use the plus and minus buttons, buttons 2 and 3, to change the offset temperature to 0.6. The radiator will now match our external thermometer. Using the plus and minus buttons, buttons 2 and 3, we can go anywhere between minus 5 degrees to plus 5 degrees. When you are happy with the offset temperature you have chosen, press OK, button 4. Now we should be able to see the number 90 in the middle of the screen, and an arrow on the right will be pointing at number 3. Here we can select how long the backlight will stay on after we have pressed the button. So currently, when you press a button, the screen lights up, and then if you don't press anything else, it will stay on for 90 seconds and then go off. By using the plus and minus buttons, buttons 2 and 3, we can increase or decrease this time in increments of 15 seconds. I'm happy with 90 seconds, so I'm going to leave mine on 90. When you have selected the time that you are happy with, press OK, button 4. Remember, you can always come back and change any of these settings at any time. After pressing OK, the screen will be displaying a flashing zero in the middle, and the arrow on the right will be pointing at number 4. This is where we can select what the radiator will display while it is in auto mode. You have two options here. We can choose 0, or we can change it to 1. 0 will mean that the radiator will display the temperature we have set the ra radiator to and 1 will mean the radiator will display what the current temperature of the room is. Using the plus and minus buttons, buttons 2 and 3, we can change this between 0 and 1. I'm going to leave mine on 0, as I prefer to see what I have set the radiator to. Once you've decided which you prefer, press OK, button 4. Finally, you should now see the number 42 in the middle of the screen. The numbers and the plus and minus are no longer visible. This is the product number for your Aeroflow radiator. It is unlikely that you will need this. However, if you ever have any problems with your radiator, we may ask you for this number to help us identify your product. We can only press OK here, button 4, and this will take us back to the standby screen. Remember, the screen with a little circle with a line through the top. We have now set the background settings for your radiator. You can go back and alter any of these settings that you have just changed by holding down the on off button, button 5 for 5 seconds while on the standby screen. Now let's turn on the radiator. Press the on off button, that's button 5. The radiator is now on and we start in comfort mode. This is indicated by the symbol of a sun at the top of the screen and the current set temperature in the middle of the screen. Comfort mode is when your radiator is on and warming the room to your set temperature. If we press the little I button, button 4, we can see the current room temperature, which for me is 21.5 degrees. So the radiator is on and we are in comfort mode. We can now change the set temperature using the plus and minus buttons, buttons 2 and 3. The radiator's set temperature will increase or decrease in increments of 0.5 degrees. If the current room temperature is warmer than the set temperature, the radiator will remain cool, then when the set temperature is above the room temperature, the radiator will come on, which is indicated by an on symbol next to the set temperature. The government recommended temperatures for living areas is 21 degrees, and in the bedroom a little lower at 18 degrees. I quite like the room to be a little warmer, so I have changed the set temperature to 22.5. Set yours to the temperature that is most comfortable for you, and when you are ready, press the mode button. This is button 6. We should now be on frost mode. This is indicated by the small snowflake at the top and a low temperature in the middle of the screen. This mode is separate to turning the radiator off. Instead, it will reduce the temperature of the radiator to what we set on this screen. This is for when the weather is much colder and we don't want the temperature around the house to drop below freezing. It is particularly important 
in the winter or any time that you're away from the property for an extended period and there is a risk of the pipes freezing. Freezing pipes can cause them to burst. I've set mine to 6.0 degrees. You can change this value using the plus and minus buttons again, buttons two and three. When you're ready, press the mode button, button six. Now the little snowflake will have changed to a symbol of a crescent moon. This indicates that we are on the setback mode. In this setback mode, we can set the temperature that we want the radiator to drop to when we are asleep or out of the house, such as at work. You may be thinking that we might as well turn the radiator off at this point. However, the benefit of using this mode is that by reducing the temperature a little while you're out of the house, this prevents the room from getting too cold. If it did drop very low while you were out, it would take much longer to warm back up again and use a lot more energy doing so. By maintaining a lower temperature, we are using a little more electricity than turning the radiator off, but we are preventing the use of even more electricity warming the room up again. I'm going to set my setback temperature to 15 degrees. So when I go out, my radiator will go from the set comfort temperature of 22.5 down to 15. You can change yours by using the plus and minus buttons, buttons two and three. When you have decided what you are going to set your setback temperature to, press the mode button, button six. Now the screen has been filled with a lot more information. It looks a little complicated, but if you follow our instructions, it will all become clear. The mode we are on is the auto mode, which is indicated by the auto symbol at the top of the screen. When you have finished programming, you can leave your radiator in this mode and it will follow your daily instructions automatically without you having to worry about it. To program your auto mode, press the prog button, button two. So we are now in program mode, which is identified by the prog symbol in the top left corner. Here we are going to set when the radiator is on, in setback mode, and off, with off relating to frost mode. We will be doing this for each day of the week. So when your radiator is in auto mode, you can just leave it to follow your programming. In the middle of the screen, there is a 24 hour clock. Then below that, there'll be a couple of lines of boxes with a series of numbers below them. The numbers refer to each hour of the day and the boxes are indicating whether or not the radiator is in comfort mode, frost mode, or setback mode. Two boxes for comfort mode, one box for setback mode, and no boxes for frost mode. Before we continue, let's take a look back at what is meant by comfort, frost, and setback. Comfort mode is indicated by this symbol of a sun. When the radiator is in comfort mode, the radiator is on and heating you and your room to the desired temperature which has been set on the comfort mode display. Then we have frost mode, indicated by this symbol of a snowflake. This is when the radiator is maintaining a very low temperature in the room, preventing the temperature dropping below freezing. If the temperature of the room doesn't drop below your frost setting, then the radiator will not produce any heat. So during the warmer months, when the temperature doesn't drop very low, frost mode will essentially mean your radiator is off. However, if for some reason the temperature in the room did drop below your frost setting, then the radiator will stop the room temperature getting too low. Then we have setback mode, indicated by the crescent moon symbol. Setback is a lower temperature that the radiator will drop to when you're in a situation where you don't need the heating at full power, such as when you are out of the house, at work, or in bed. We recommend using this instead of turning the radiator off as it maintains a reduced temperature. So when you are due back in the room, the radiator won't take as long or as much energy to reheat the room back up to your comfort temperature. Now we need to get back to programming your radiator. We should still be in the prog mode. We may have been placed back into the auto mode while we were looking at the modes and their meanings. This is because we didn't press anything. So it reverted back to the previous screen. Press the prog button button two to get back to the programming screen. Okay, in the programming screen, we have the numbers one to seven on the right hand side. These are now referring to the days of the week again. So one being Monday and seven being Sunday. The arrow will be pointing at number one, Monday. The digital clock in the middle of the screen will be on zero, 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 zero for midnight. And if this is the first time you have been on this screen, a single box will be flashing above zero hours. The boxes represent whether the radiator is on, off, or in setback mode for each hour of the day. Two boxes for on or comfort mode, one box for setback mode, and zero boxes 
for off or frost mode. Currently, the programming is on default factory setup, indicating for midnight to 7 in the morning, the radiator is in setback mode. Then at 7, the heating will come on in comfort mode until 8 in the evening. Then back to setback mode until midnight. We can change this programming by using the comfort, setback and frost buttons. Comfort is button 1, setback is button 2 and frost is button 3. So currently the box above zero hours is flashing. Now we can decide whether we want the radiator on, in setback mode or frost mode. Using the buttons 1, 2 or 3, choose what you want for that time. On mine, I've chosen to have the radiator on frost mode. So by pressing button 3, the box disappears. Now the next box is flashing for 1am. Do this for the rest of the day, choosing whether you want the radiator in comfort mode, in setback mode or frost mode for the different hours of the day. I will set mine now as well. As you can see, I have set my day so the heating will be in frost mode indicated by no boxes from 0 hours till 4am. Then from 4am until 9am, the radiator is in comfort mode indicated by two boxes. This is because I usually get out of bed around 7am and then leave the house for work at around 9am. Then from 9am till 3pm, I'm leaving my radiator in setback mode. This is indicated by one box. This is so that the radiator doesn't take as long to heat up, so when I get back from work at 5, the house is at my comfort temperature. From 3pm till 9pm, my radiator will be back it on in comfort mode. Then finally, from 9pm until midnight, my radiator goes back into frost mode. If you change your mind about any of the times, you can go back through the day, but you will need to repeat the whole day again and make the changes as you go through. Once you are happy that your day is set up to how you would like, we can move on to the next day. When we press OK, button 4, we will move from Monday to Tuesday. Before you do this, we have two options. Option 1, you can change each day individually and repeat the process for every day of the week. If you would like to do this, just press the OK button once, that's button 4, and it will move you on to the next day of the week. Option 2. If you would like to copy the setup for today onto the next day. So if, for example, you work Monday to Friday and want to repeat your current set heating program for Monday through to Friday, you can do this by holding down the OK button, button 4. If you hold it down until the arrow on the right hand side drops to the next number, you should see the previous day's programming on the next number. Make sure you wait until you see the arrow move or you'll need to input the day's programming again. If you have copied the programming onto the next day, you should see the previous day's programming. You can still make changes to that day by using the comfort, setback and frost buttons. Repeat this process for the whole week, remembering that 1 to 5 is Monday to Friday and 6 to 7 is Saturday and Sunday. While we are on the auto mode screen, there are a couple of other options we should know about now that you are happy with the programming you have set. First of all, there's a little timer symbol. Currently, this is located above button one. This is the boost symbol. This mode is for occasions when you're at home when you might not normally be. Perhaps you are ill or have the day off and your radiator's auto programming has the radiator at a setting that is a bit cold. You can use this boost option to raise the temperature to something specific for a set amount of time. Press the boost button, button 1. You will now see a little timer icon with a flashing 5 degrees in the middle of the screen. This is where we set the temperature that we want to boost to. Using the plus and minus buttons, buttons 2 and 3, select the temperature you would like to boost to. Now press OK. 
button 4. The temperature will now change to a digital timer with 30 minutes on. Using the plus and minus buttons again, buttons 2 and 3, we can increase this in 30 minute increments to how long you want to boost to. So I set the temperature to 23 degrees for one and a half hours. Now press OK button 4. After pressing OK, the plus and minus buttons will disappear. We can leave the radiator on this setting until the timer runs down. To cancel this before the timer runs out, we just need to press OK button 4. Let's cancel the boost so we can look at the other options we have in auto mode. Press OK button 4. We will now be taken back into the auto mode screen and out of boost mode. The other option we need to look at is the holiday mode. This is indicated by the symbol of a little suitcase over button 3. This mode will put the radiator into frost mode for a set amount of days and then return it to the auto mode. To set this, press the holiday button, button 3. Now we can see a little suitcase at the top of the screen and a flashing number 1. The flashing number 1 represents how many days we want to leave the radiator in holiday mode for. Change this using the plus and minus buttons, buttons 2 and 3. This holiday mode can be used if you go away for a 7 day holiday, you can put the radiator into holiday mode for 6 days, therefore when you arrive home you will be greeted with a nice warm house. Now after choosing how many days you want to put the radiator in holiday mode for, press OK button 4. Now again, the plus and minus symbols will disappear and the number of days will stop flashing. If we are going away, we can just leave the radiator now and that will count down and when it runs out, it will revert the radiator to auto mode. Now to get out of holiday mode, press OK, button 4 and it will take you back to the auto mode. OK, before we go, you need to remember to leave your radiator in auto mode so that it can follow your daily programming. If you don't leave it in auto mode, it may be in frost mode, setback mode or comfort mode and not follow your programming. So make sure there is an auto symbol at the top of the screen. So that's how you set up your Aeroflow radiator. I hope this has been easy to follow and you now have a good understanding of how to get the most out of your radiator. If you have any more questions, please don't hesitate to contact any of our service team who will be happy to help you and guide you through any questions or issues you might have. Alternatively, you can revisit any point in this video to recap anything you missed.